Welcome to Digging Deeper with Backyard Farmer. I'm your host, Kim Todd, and on Digging Deeper, we have in-depth discussions with extension experts about those important landscape topics. Tonight, we're going to be focusing on children and gardening. Thank you for joining us once again for Digging Deeper with Backyard Farmer. Getting the next generation interested in gardening is so important. We want to help them understand where food comes from and how they can turn a hobby into a lifelong practice. And here to discuss this topic is our Backyard Farmer Horticulture Panelist, Elizabeth Ekstrom. Elizabeth, welcome aboard. Thank you. And congratulations on that marriage. Uh, thank We're you. We're going to have to get used to that new name. It's going to be a trick. <laughs> so you are absolutely one of the perfect people to talk about children and gardening because you have a couple small munchkins that you have been working with for, of course, all their lives, but, but certainly also now that we are uh, at home, you have been doing all sorts of things with those kids. We've been doing all sorts of projects at home and I tried to bring it back to horticulture so then I could use it for my, for my work. Um, but I have two boys, they're four and eight, and so we really had that preschool, early um, elementary school, and, and kind of did a few different projects with them throughout the summer to bring them back to gardening. So let's start by talking about one of those projects. So the easiest project that we started with was a greenhouse in a bag. And it's one of the easiest ones you can do. You can do this with those little tiny seed bead bags you can get at the craft section of the store, or you can use a little zip top bag, um, whichever one you choose, and you take a damp cotton ball, you stick a seed inside, and you watch it sprout. It is the easiest thing you've ever done. Um, if you want to, what you can do is you can either put them in a window or what we've often done is you turn it into a necklace. So they can wear the seeds around like a necklace and then the warmth of the body helps those seeds to germinate. When I do this project, I most of the time I use beans just because they are the easiest one to see sprout and their germination rate's really good. Um, so if you have old bean seeds sitting around, um, you can go ahead and do that with them. So once you get them to germinate in their cotton ball, do, did the boys actually plant them in the garden or? We did not. Um, we sacrificed them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one of the projects that you can also do with bean seeds is you can do seedling germination rate. Um, so because I have an eight year old, we're in first grade, we're learning math, you know, fractions and um, things like that he's not really working on, but we'll, we'll get there. But what we did is we put a bunch of seeds inside a, that bag again with a damp paper towel, and we tested to see how much of those seeds actually germinated. So what percentage of our seeds from 2016 germinated versus our 2017 and 2019. Um, and so we have the results and let's just say the 2016 seeds didn't do anything. So if you have super old bean seeds, you need to get rid of them. Um, but this was a good example to be like, okay, why do you think these seeds didn't sprout? Or how old are these seeds? Or what percentage of these went ahead and sprouted? And as we get to the newer seeds, you can go ahead and you can see the percent germination that went and sprouted. And so it was a good learning experience to be like, okay, we need to get fresh seeds every year. And the 2018 seeds really took off, um, big radicals on there. Some of them actually split open. 2019, they were a little bit slower, but they all sprouted and I had 100% germination rate on our 2019 seeds. So that was expected, um, but that was fun. And what we do after we take those seeds out of the bag, I said we sacrificed them. <laughs> and one of the all time favorite projects to do with kids is to look at the parts of the seed. Mm. So what you do is you can take seeds from the grocery store right off the shelf. Um, it's easier if you use red beans or black beans. Uh, I also use lima beans because I don't like to eat them. I'd rather dissect them than eat them. But what you do is you soak these overnight or you can use the ones you did in your germination rate. And after about a day or two, then you start to have the new growth that comes out the bottom, the little tiny root, and then you start ripping them apart. Um, you see if you can take the seed coat off. Can you find the embryo? Can you find the cotyledon? Then we talk about what the job is for each one of those parts. The seed coat protects the seed. 
The cotyledon, what it does is it's the lunchbox for the seed and it provides the food for the embryo, which is the baby plant. In lima beans, you can really see that embryo inside the bean after a couple days. And it's really cool to see. Now, if you wanted to go further, you could go ahead and you could plant some of those and see if they come up. I've had fairly good success with those. And then plant some of those without the cotyledon attached. And then you see, can that little embryo make it without the cotyledon or does it need to have the cotyledon to survive? That, that sounds really excellent for children. How hard was it for you to keep their attention during all of this? So um, short bursts. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the best way to describe that, you know, a four-year-old and an eight-year-old. I mean, if we get 10, 15, 20 minutes out of that, it's a good day. Um, Sounds like adults. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Average adult attention spans, what, 20 minutes? Yeah. So, you know, we don't want to go much more than that. Um, and so short bursts, little quick activities, and then changing to the next thing. Um, so with my oldest, okay, here's the parts of a seed. What do plants need to grow? or draw a picture of a flower and just kind of change all those activities up throughout the day. Excellent. So let's talk about another one because you did a lot more activities than just one and you probably have a lot more sort of in your toolkit right now for the rest of the summer. We do have a lot more in our toolkit. So we were one of the crazy ones that planted peas in March. Mm -hmm. um, because that's when you can plant your peas. So we were out there on one of those really nice March days planting peas and carrots and beets. Uh, we made our own seed tape with toilet paper and Elmer's glue and spaced it out evenly because if you've ever tried to plant seeds with little kids, <laughs> you don't get them spaced evenly or in the row. So that seed tape really helped out and we planted our peas and then we had three inches of snow on top of them. Oh. So that was a really good learning experience for the kids to see that the peas can still survive even though they had the snow on top of them. And right now we're getting to the point where we can actually be picking our peas off and the peas are getting ready to go away. Um, but they go out every day and check on the pea plants and make sure that they're producing peas. And we have eaten more immature peas then I think we have mature peas at this point in time. Of course, because they're better. They're better and we just can't wait. Just can't wait, exactly. So I would think something like doing the seed tape would also be, you have the opportunity for math because, you know, here's two, here's three, here's the whole tape, here's the stretch, those kinds of things. Yeah, we talk about math and then also with the little ones, it's the dexterity of picking up the sure. bean or yeah. picking up the, the seed and putting it on the tape and working on that hand strength and things like that. So that works out really good with the little ones too. Mm -hmm. um, you can even make seed collages. Let's say we have our 2016 bean seeds that we know aren't gonna sprout. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and, and have some artwork. Make a bean display. Do something that will utilize those old seeds. Um, with the older kids, you can go ahead and make a seed display and break it up by families and see how all the seed seeds in one family are, are alike, like your Swiss chard and your beet seeds, how they look the same and are they the same or different? And those are just some other things that you can do as well. And I would suspect with two boys, you did not suggest the pea shooter with the peas or the beans. <laughs> I have had kids squirt the little beans out of their seed coats before and they do go very far. Um, <laughs> so I have to be careful where I'm at what, what if we use that project or not. <laughs> exactly. So any more that you want to talk about? So when we look at some other curriculum that are out there, you mm -hmm. can make up your own curriculum um, through finding some different books that are out there. Um, I stole some books from my, ch from my child, um, <laughs> Five Tough Seeds. So we go through some different seeds and it goes through what those plants become. Or um, some other ones are experiments with parts of a plant and it's a whole series that goes down through it. So just because it's not a gardening curriculum doesn't mean that you can't use it and you can't educate with it because I mean really, what kid hasn't read The Very Hungry Caterpillar? And that's another one that's out there. But there are some put out by extension um, 
The Learn, Grow, Eat, Go is a really great curriculum. It talks about not only just the gardening aspect, mm -hmm. but it also talks about the, the nutritional aspect and cooking with it and taste testing and trying different things. And so this one's really fun and they just came out with like a preschool program as well that you can do. Um, but you've got your own garden journal. So all this is really great ideas that you can use to go ahead and practice gardening with children. Excellent. So how about digging in that dirt as a part of one of the things you've done with them? It, we <laughs> have been in digging in containers. Um, I got my, our garden in the ground late, um, mm -hmm. but we planted in the dirt and we got out the hoe and we have our own child sized tools that makes that digging in the dirt that much easier and that much safer mm -hmm. because I have tools that are metal. I really don't want the children to use the spiky metal um, garden tools. So they have their own child sized tools. Child size watering cans are amazing because they fill it up four times as much as what you would fill it up and it keeps them busy for Ever. I watered all the plants, the, or Tucker watered all the plants the other day because I gave him his little child-sized watering can. Mm -hmm. um, but that's also something that helps with children is giving them their own sense of this is my plant and I planted it myself. So is that the way you have your garden set up? So each of the boys has their own little space or place or their own little plant or fruit basket upset? Fruit basket upset. Um, we, we plant our containers first because we can plant those in March. And so they each take turns planting something inside the containers. This year, because we had the cold snap in May, we had to replant a bunch of plants and I didn't happen to tell them because I just planted them myself. But they love it. Um, the youngest one eats lettuce right out of the containers. I don't even have to wash it or do anything with it. I don't particularly like it, but if he's going out there and munching on it, I will just let him go ahead and do that. That was going to be a ne my next question, which is how, how has this helped the boys learn to eat those foods, or are there ones that they still are turning up their noses on? Are there ones that they absolutely love, like the peas that never make it into the house? It's kind of interesting because if they grow it, they're more likely to at least try it. Right. And so we've had the red okra, we've had eggplant, we've had just different weird, odd stuff. Um, I remember when Tucker was 18 months old, he tootled on out to the container and he pulled up a turnip and just bit right into it and ate it. And I'm like, you do you, buddy, go ahead. <laughs> and so now I know that they like turnips. So they do a bit. Um, if the child gets to grow it, they're more likely to try it. And we have a rule that you have to at least take a bite and try it. Mm -hmm. um, and in this curriculum, it has um, parts of a seed or parts of a plant. So you try each and every different part of the plant, whether it's the carrot, which is the root or the stem or the leaf and the flower and the seeds um, and then the actual vegetable themselves. And it's kind of fun to watch the little wheels turn where I didn't realize I was eating a stalk or a stem right. of lettuce or the seed or the flower on broccoli. That blows their mind that broccoli is a flower. Exactly, yeah. We wanna make sure that you watch us on Facebook and that will be at eight o'clock on Thursday evenings. You can give us all of your comments. It's great to hear what you like about what we're doing and your comments help our panelists and help our viewers understand a little bit more about the subject than the time we typically have during the real show. So Elizabeth, what about insects and worms and all of those really cool things that end up in the garden. How, how have the boys responded to that in this whole process? So every year we try to grow parsley on purpose and we mm -hmm. grow parsley and dill so we can watch the swallowtails. Mm -hmm. And last year it was awesome because we had five hatches of swallowtails in our containers. And so every morning we would tootle out and we'd look at the caterpillars and we'd tootle back into the house. And so then we had to explain that when the caterpillars get so big, they have to go pupate somewhere else. And so the caterpillars disappeared. And then um, we just saw our first yellow swallowtail this weekend. So we know that they're out and about and they're laying eggs right now, but that's fun to watch them. Um, um, you know, we read the book about the very hungry caterpillar and then we learn about the caterpillars themselves. Fun, and how are they with 
bees and, and stinging sorts of things? Are they afraid? How, what have you been able to do with them in the gardening process? So we also have a lot of flowers at our house and so we talk about what the bees and wasps are and what their jobs are and they know that bees make honey. Um, so that's one of their main ones. Uh, the wasps on the other hand we aren't big fans of so they always let me know when we have a, have a wasp but we love to watch the butterflies and the moths. We love to watch all of the, the bees and, and all those on the flowers themselves and then it's always fun to tie that back to okay which flower did the bee like like better or we've got the hummingbird moths that come out mm -hmm. and we talk about what that big caterpillar turns into this moth and it's just fun to fun to see that correlation between those. So have they made the connection pretty well then between the fact that they're growing it in the garden and the grocery store? We're working on that. Mm -hmm. um, in the grocery store, it looks just a little bit different. and they <laughs> No soil, no raised no, bed, no, no insects. No soil, no raised bed. The peas are in a container already. Um, but it's just kind of fun to, to see, mm -hmm. OK, mom, what is that? Can we try that? You bet we're going to try that, because I've never had a guava before. Um, but it just gives them an opportunity to, to look and see if we can grow some dirt, different things. I've already had a request that we grow strawberries and blackberries um, next time. So we'll see, oh, and apples. Um, oh boy. Yeah. Sounds like an acreage in your future <laughs> or an urban apple. <laughs> yeah, we're going we? with an urban one, but yeah, we, they've exactly. already told me what we're going to grow. So that's just fun for them to have an input on what we could possibly grow. <laughs> exactly, and, and do they understand composting then too, I assume? Yeah, we worked on that this year as well. What can mm -hmm. go in the compost? We had a little compost pile, so they loved putting their extra fruit and vegetable scraps in the, the mm -hmm. compost bin. The eggs went in, the eggshells go into the compost bin. Um, and then we had to, of course, put coffee grounds in the compost bin. As much as we could put into the compost bin, they would put in there and then watch it just kind of break down with time. And that's just fun fun to see that, okay, we're using these scraps for something else. Exactly. So would you have one piece of advice for someone who really wants to get their children engaged in gardening and doesn't exactly know what the best first step would be? So the best first step, anybody that's gardening needs to start small. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't need acres upon acres of vegetable crops. And I say start small in terms of size, but also start small with what you're going to introduce the children to. Mm -hmm. um, if you know they like green beans, try green beans and something different. Um, there's no way my boys would have ate okra right off the bat. It took several years of trying different crops for them to eat okra. They still won't touch eggplant and that's okay. Not everybody that's, likes yeah, eggplant. Not everybody likes eggplant. <laughs> <laughs> but just starting small, starting with a few plants, and then as um, interest continues to grow, uh, go ahead and make that garden a little bigger or add more containers or just diversify what you're growing. And head those young men into 4-H maybe as they get a little older, right? Yep, we're still clover kid age at this point in time, but eventually I think mom's going to make them be in 4-H. I think they'll probably like 4-H in some fashion. Well, that is all the time we have for Digging Deeper with Backyard Farmer. We want to say thanks to Elizabeth for taking the time to visit with us. We will be back next week with another discussion about gardening topics that matter to you. Be sure to watch Backyard Farmer Live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Central on NET. Thanks for digging deeper with Backyard Farmer.